Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making the national dish of Greece, which is going to be moussaka. And I don't know about you, I've never had moussaka, but I do have a connection to moussaka from the movie uh, Hercules, which was my favorite as a kid. And it's still like nowadays my kind of favorite classic Disney movie. Obviously, Thor Ragnarok has taken the top spot of Disney movies, but it's kind of cheating when you involve superheroes. I guess Hercules is kind of a superhero. Moussaka is referred to early in the movie. It's like right when Hercules is born. Hades is like, I've never been this choked up. Or the last time I've been this choked up, I had a hunk of moussaka stuck in my throat. And so when I saw that the national dish for Greece was moussaka, I'm like, gotta do that. However, there was a close runner up. Um, I can't remember where it's from now. Obviously it starts with a G but I believe it was called Pepper Pot, which kind of is deceiving for, for the name, but it, like, it looked super good. I'm like, ooh, like, I, I wanna make that. But it had a number of ingredients that I couldn't really find, like some spices and like peppers and things like that. It's like, there was like, I think, like, Chi Chi peppers? I could be wrong. I read this about a week ago, but it also involved uh, cow's feet and oxtail, which they do not carry at the grocery store that I go to. I could have gone to like a local butcher and probably gotten those pretty easily. But that involves social interaction and I make videos alone on YouTube for a reason. Anyway, why don't we run through the ingredients? It's gonna be pretty quick because there's a lot of them, so I'm just gonna try and zip through this and uh, then we'll get into cooking. So the ingredients are kind of going to be divided up into categories much like the video going forward is going to be divided up even though the steps are going to actually be executed intermingled it's just a way of having some cohesive thought to it so it's going to be eggplants the meat filling and then the bechamel cells bechamel oh, I, I am blanking now on the correct pronunciation but i think it's just french for like white sauce anywho we're going to run through set ingredients. So the eggplants, I've kind of prepped a little bit already, but for them, you just need to have two pounds of eggplants, and then you're going to cut them up and put some salt on it and let the moisture kind of come out. It takes 30 minutes, that's why I did it ahead of time, because I kind of wanted to get this show on the road. Now, we have the meat sauce. So that's gonna involve ground beef, uh, beef broth, crushed tomatoes, beef bouillon cube, garlic, onions, tomato paste, and then an assortment of spices. So we have salt, sugar, cinnamon, oregano, and then bay leaves. And then next, the bechamel sauce, which I keep saying I probably should have paused and looked up, but that, I'll put the spelling and then you'll know what I'm talking about. That's going to involve milk, flour, butter, two eggs, but you're excluding one of the egg whites so it's two egg yolks and then one egg white and then an assortment of parmesan cheese grated uh, black pepper nutmeg and then salt and then finally it's going to be topped with some breadcrumbs so those are the ingredients there's a lot i encourage you to read the recipe very thoroughly to make sure that you have everything and then probably kind of prep beforehand because it's, a, there's a lot of things happening. There's one step where it just says like, dump the rest in. So read the recipe, know what you're doing before getting into this. It's a little bit complicated. So we're gonna see how this goes, but I have everything prepped. So it should be smooth sailing for me. So the first step is going to be the rest of the eggplant prep step. That's just going to be to pat them dry. Obviously that's removing any excess moisture along with removing some of the salt that we applied to pull out that moisture. Then we're gonna put them on a parchment lined baking sheet. Well, baking sheets, however many it takes to kind of get the job done. You might need to do a few sets in the oven like if you can't fit or if you don't have enough baking sheets, you gotta figure it out. Um, I'm probably gonna try and cram as many on there because I do not want to do multiple of these steps because time is a, uh, I'm not starting early, I can tell you that. Put that in the oven at 450 for 15 to 20 minutes. So 
So now we're gonna start the meat sauce. Obviously, like I said, I'm kind of showing you everything in phases, but in reality, you can probably kind of intersperse these in whatever logical way makes sense. But I'm not the boss of you, so you gotta kind of read and figure it out. The first step is going to be to, in a um, skillet, some kind of pan on the stove top, we are going to cook the onions and the garlic in olive oil for about two minutes, and then we're gonna add in the beef and kind of let that brown, breaking it up as you're cooking it. And now next we want to, it says just add all the other ingredients. It, it breaks the ingredients down by um, kind of like the meat sauce and whatnot. So that's a lot of the spices. It's like the crushed tomatoes, the tomato paste, the beef broth, the bouillon cube, all that. Put that in there, stir it all up. Then you're going to let it come to a simmer. Then we're gonna reduce down to medium low and then let it kind of cook for 15 minutes. So next we're going to start on the bechamel sauce, which essentially is just a roux and milk. I, I believe that's kind of what like the definition of it is. Um, it's going to be a, I want to say a white roux. I remember when I did the um, gumbo recipe, I kind of went through all the different ones. I think it's like white, blonde, brown, and then like the Cajun one. So we're doing the first one, which is going to involve us melting butter in a pan. Then we're going to add the flour to it and then stir, obviously stirring constantly um, for a minute to like let that cook. So we're not cooking for very long, just a minute and you're good to go. Now, still continuing to stir, we're going to add in slowly the milk and just kind of let that whole thing thicken up into a like white sauce. So now we want to remove from heat, add in the spices and the Parmesan cheese. So it's like salt, the Parmesan cheese, nutmeg, and then the ground pepper. And then we're gonna let that cool for about five minutes and then whisk in the eggs. So now we have the eggplants done, we have the meat sauce done, we have the bechamel sauce done. It's time to assemble that all into moussaka. So half the eggplants go on the bottom, then all of the meat sauce on top of that, then the other half of the eggplants go on top of that. Then you're gonna pour all of the bechamel sauce on top of all of that, sprinkle on the breadcrumbs, pop that in the oven at 350, so you have to reduce the heat down, 350 for 30 to 40 minutes, should be golden brown, should be delicious. I will see you after it's baked.
All right, here we have it. Just right out the gate, smells fantastic. The bechamel sauce over top of it kind of sealed in all the aromas. So like once I like scooped it out, you just get hit with this like that like nutmeg cinnamon smell. And it has this like hearty, like rich aroma to it too from like the meat and whatnot. I'm very excited to see how this tastes. So why, why wait longer? Just dig into it and then I'll let you know uh, how it tastes on the other side. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. That's amazing. You need to try this. It is delicious. And I don't know if you're similar to me in that I don't really eat a whole lot of eggplant. This is a fantastic eggplant recipe. I know I made the eggplant in Voltini ages ago now. And that was like a few recipes that I purposely kind of seeked out eggplant related stuff. This one just fell into my lap and I am very happy for it. It's, it's just, it's, it's amazing. All of it working together. I see why it's a national dish because it's just like the creaminess and like the hardiness and like the spices. And then you get a little, little bit of crunch from the breadcrumbs on top. Ooh, it's fantastic. And I mean, just to, you know, wrap it into the gluten-free aspect of things, obviously breadcrumbs, gluten-free, and the flour, gluten-free. But besides that, there wasn't really any changes that I needed to make, and I just swapped one for one. Um, so super easy to make gluten-free. Obviously, the recipe I am going to link to is not a gluten-free recipe, but I mean, you just swap out the flour, swap out the breadcrumbs, you know how to do that if you've been cooking gluten-free for a handful of minutes. It's, whew, it's, it's good. I'm gonna probably eat about half of this because I have not eaten dinner yet and it's way past dinner time. So I'm about to eat a lot of this. And that's the other thing. This will really be, this will be a 12 out of 10 if it reheats well. And I'm gonna have this for lunch tomorrow so I will obviously let you know in the text floating around someplace how that does but I suspect it'll be fine I don't know it might not keep like the crunchiness aspect but I feel like everything else within here should reheat fine I'm not a hundred percent sure on like how well eggplant reheats but the meat aspect should be good to go so we'll just see how the rest of it goes but overall if you're eating it fresh right now I can tell you amazing so if you haven't had this before or if you are hungry and you just have two hours to spare make this because you will not regret it and on that note bye mom still not dead see you